Focus. I innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to Decoding Business Growth. I'm Samira Abdi. Well, there's no love sincerer than the love of food, wrote the famous playwright George Bernard Shaw a century ago. Perhaps he had India in mind when he wrote that. Well, by definition, we Indians love food. Or shall I say we're crazy about it. We are foodies at our very core. Look at the range and the variety of cuisines that's cooked across the country. It's mind-boggling. And interestingly, each state has its own distinct style of cooking, so much so that some of the cooking styles or dishes from a particular region are now generically referred to as South Indian food or Punjabi food or Marwari food, so on and so forth. But what makes these foods different and unique are the masalas that go into it. And that's what tickles our palate. While talking about masalas, the focus of this week's episode is on the Chennai-based unlisted company that makes South Indian masalas and ready-to-cook food. In two decades, Archie Masala has managed to dominate the kitchen and supermarket shelves in South India. And unlike most FMCG companies, Archie has followed a distinct strategy to carve out a niche in the market. They've converted the rural market, which was used to buying cheap and unbranded masalas, into an affordable Archie brand. Take a look at this story. It promises to be spicy. Grandmas have always enjoyed a very special place in Indian homes. They are revered by everybody. Cashing in on this positive image, A.D. Padma Singh Isaac built a successful business around it. Archie, which in Tamil means grandmother, is one of the fastest growing masala brands in South India. Archie Masala came into being in 1995 to make spices, masalas, oil and ghee, wheat products, flour products, pickles, tea and beverages, rice based varieties, papad, ready to cook products, biscuits and jams and mineral water. Effectively, Archie produces a range of 160 branded products at its 11 plants located in Chennai. These products are distributed through a network of 3,500 exclusive agents to 10 lakh retail outlets across the country. 60% of its products are sold in Tamil Nadu and the balance 40% in other states. Besides the domestic market, Archie caters to the South Indian diaspora globally. The company, besides dominating kitchen shelves, also makes medicinal oils, cough syrups, toilet cleaners, honey and energy drinks. All these are sold under different brand names like Sabash, Blesso, Twinkle, Rani and Tanjus. But building a successful brand in 20 years was an uphill task. To hark back in time, Isaac, who was born in a small village in Tamil Nadu's Tirunelveli district, joined Godrej Soaps in Chennai after his graduation in 1979. He learned the ABC of FMCG trade during his 10-year stint at Godrej. Having risen to the post of area sales manager, he soon realized that he will not be able to grow beyond that position. And this reality made him plunge headlong into the masala business with a capital of 80,000 rupees. That time itself I am able to visualize there is a huge demand for food products. That is why in the year 1998 I started Archie Masala Foods Private Limited uh, with a great vision. Since my vision and the goal is very clear converting unbrand into commo and commodity to brand and I registered the brand and it is a it uh, gave a clear way for my launch and when I came out with my Colombo chili powder that is the masala initially it was not accepted very much by the retailers I approached the consumer and almost about two three years I really struggled to launch those products and uh, because of the quality of my product it was well accepted and the price also very much affordable that is why I am able to penetrate my product to the rural markets which are from the day one itself I was concentrating on the rural markets. The strategy of concentrating in rural and semi-urban markets and having a huge basket of 160 products paid off for ISAC. I have kept my product line very big. 
because we have to cater to urban markets, rural markets, and rich people, middle class people, local, uh, higher, uh, lower income class people also. Because if I have a basket of product, then only it will be easy for me for a very good distribution network. Because we are having a very good distribution. Today we are having almost 4,000 agents. Because I have to give them good products. Then only they will be able to make a fairly good business. Thereby they can make their livelihoods also. Because our agents are exclusive agents for Achi. And uh, it is possible only if I have a big basket of products. And we are concentrating mainly on the rural areas. The profitability is not very high, but the volume of business is very high. In the long run, it will definitely have a good result. And it shows, while the industry has been growing at 15% CAGR, Archie has been clocking a CAGR of 30% over the last three years. For the year ended March 2015, Archie has posted a turnover of 855 crore rupees and is expected to cross the 1000 crore rupee mark next year. On that positive note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV team Samira Abdi talks to Hemant Vora of ICICI Securities to get a ringside view of Archie Masala. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Samira Abdi caught up with Hemant Vora of ICICI Securities to find out what he thinks about Archie's strategy of primarily focusing on rural and semi-urban markets. And this is what he has to say. Take a look. Hi, Hemant. Hi. Now, Archie Masala this week. What is it about this company that appeals to you so much? I think Archie, uh, one single factor which I believe very strongly about this company is the way they have created a distribution network. I mean, this company manages about 600 SKUs and uh, they distribute across more than a million retail outlets. And all these things that they have achieved is in a span of less than 20 years. For a company like this to achieve this kind of a scale and a distribution network, which very few companies today have, I think it's really, really, really commendable for them. No, you know, I take your point, uh, okay, in 20 years they have managed to grow to 1,000 crores, but their main market is, say, uh, rural or even semi-urban for that matter. Here, this is a market which is very price sensitive, right? So, uh, perhaps volume growth comes at the cost of margins. Is that the right strategy for them or do you think at some point they'll need to start focusing at high margin products? I think very clearly for consumer companies, the most important thing is that how do you manage your distributors, stroke retailers and how do you manage your end, consumer, end customer. Mm -hmm. So, these are the two things which are extremely important. Mm -hmm. I think they have spent a lot of efforts and a lot of money in terms of the way they design and engineer their product. You know, the R&D has really come out with some kind of products where they are able to not only distribute, uh, but also leave a huge margin for both the retailers as well as the consumer. I think that balancing act between these two is something which Archie has played extremely well. And as you rightly mentioned, it is a semi-urban stroke rural market. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to give them the product which they are currently missing in their portfolio. And that's something which excites the customer and even motivates the retailers to go and sell out much in the market. Yeah, but how many products do you give a consumer, right? One might even say that their R&D division is overproductive, okay? They have 140 products. Could this be a case of over-diversification? Have they spread themselves too thin? I think as long as there is a demand for the product, as long as there is a demand for the category of product, I mean, why not? I think which is what Archie has been able to do. They have been able to identify those gaps very clearly and then provide them those, you know, products which kind of the customers are urging to have and that's really played very well. So, yes, I agree, it's a 600 SKUs, it's quite a huge number, mm. but it is selling because consumers are picking it up, retailers are more than eager to sell it. But don't you think this kind of a business strategy requires way too much workforce and deep pockets? Not really. I think, uh, you know, Archie has really played a strategy very well. So, what they have done is, instead of spending too much money on, you know, advertising the products, Yes. On Archie's side, the advertising the mother brand is something which they have been continuously doing. 
as far as product is concerned, the way they market is they leverage the distribution network. They put the product into the market first and then very, very carefully decide on the ad spend to communicate with the consumer. So that strategy has worked extremely well rather than marketing the product first. They have actually distributed first and then communicated with the customer. Yeah, you know, they actually sound like they're just about right to hit the IPO market, should they? Very much, very much. I mean, the company is now, this year, they'll cross 1,000 crores, okay? And uh, they have been uh, doing extremely well, both in terms of, you know, profitability, in terms of margins and all. I think they are the right candidate. This will actually, you know, uh, sink in very well with their strategy to grow, to go pan India in a very short span of time. So I think IPO is something which is must for them. Okay, so you mentioned their need to grow into a pan India company, right? So a lot of their products right now are very geographic centric, right? Pickles in certain parts of the area, different from pickles in the rest of India. Could they actually grow into a pan India brand? What will be the challenges for them? Of course, I mean, today if you look at pickles, which traditionally used to be, you know, a southern India or a few parts of western India, that's something which is becoming a very homogeneous product nowadays. So every household across the country is now looking for, you know, pickles, jams and all these things are very much on the, on the table today. And it's becoming a, a daily affair for, for people. And that's the reason why this company actually decided to even launch the non-vegetarian set of pickles today. And which, uh, you know, uh, to everyone's surprise, it's picked up extremely well. Today they have a pickle category of almost about 10 to 11 varieties and including veg and non-veg both and that's something which has been uh, doing extremely well. Yeah, so pickles is making its way into the main course, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, they're essentially first generation entrepreneurs, right? Uh, so how would you rate the promoters on a scale of 1 to 10 or even in comparison with their peers? I think if you if you see Mr. Isaac personally, he's extremely passionate. What he brings to the table is, uh, you know, he was working with a consumer company earlier, right? And that's when he decided to uh, quit the job and start something on, on his own. Uh, he is one guy who actually is extremely passionate, uh, not only in terms of, you know, distributing his product, but even to see that how he motivates his team. Uh, he himself visits most of the distributors. He personally visits most of the di distributors himself. And even his sons, if you look at, you know, Abhishek who takes care of, uh, uh, you know, the marketing piece. Even the corner side, the small little shop, they would know him and he would know them. And the way they communicate is basically as if, as if we are friends. You know, so they, they are able to go down to that level, communicate in such a manner that, you know, they, they feel there's an ownership feeling even at the retailer level. So that passion is something which is now being driven right within the organization up to the last leg. So that's something which uh, is, is what is driving the company overall. Okay, so they have a few niches for sure, right? So the management style, even some of their products for sure. But you know, India as a consumer of masalas has some giants in this space already, right? So MDH, Everest, these are guys who have a bulk of the market share. On a SWOT analysis sort of level, do you think these uh, Archie Masala can actually shake some of these bigger competitors, grab some more market share from them? Very much. I think uh, there's a room available very clearly. And, and as you rightly mentioned, MDH Everest, these are some of the uh, names of repute which have been there in the country for so long. But Archie, the way they started with, you know, uh, the Tamil Nadu market and slowly moved into the other states and the southern market and now moving into the western and northern market and even the east okay, very clearly shows that, you know, they have been able to gauge the pulse of the customer very clearly, number one. Number two is, in addition to masala, they have been able to offer various other products, hmm. okay. So, I mean, pickles, for example, you mentioned about it, it's a completely new addition. They also have ready-to-cook, ready-to-eat to ready to uh, segment, which is completely new. They have cakes, they have gulab jamuns, and they have a huge variety out there. So the combination of masala and this entire variety is something which is helping them, which I don't think the competitors today really have. Hmm. I think they are still focusing largely on masalas, whereas Archie has moved. Masala still continues to be one of the uh, important components, but they have act actually been able to add various other components to their portfolio. That's true, actually, because, you know, I believe they're also targeting the South Indian diaspora in many of their export markets, right? So 20 years, 1,000 crores. But what do the next 10 or 20 years hold? What is their vision for the future? I think the vision is very clear. They want to become uh, one of the leading FMCG players in the next five years' time at a pan-India level. Uh, they are absolutely clear about it. So while we are talking about Achi Masala Foods, which is largely into food, they also have another company within their uh, group and within the family ownership, which is into non-food segment, the personal care products. And that segment also is, is making its own uh, move into the market today. 
so they have got a variety of uh, products within the non food segment as well so they are very clearly poised very clearly uh, focused to see that how we can become one of the leading fmcg players at the pan india level in the next 5 years time and mr isaac is really driving that strategy right up to the last level yeah and a good time to do that as Absolutely. well absolutely well what a dream heman thanks very much for speaking with us well that was heman pura telling us why archie has grown into a formidable brand in less than 2 decades on that note it's time for another short break when we come back we look at the road ahead for the company stay tuned Welcome back. Archie Masala has come to rule the kitchens today. Now the management is going beyond masalas to make the life of working women easy. It has got into ready to cook foods. As such, our uh, total in our total business turnover, 60% business comes from spices and masalas. Whereas 40% comes from food and uh, uh, ready to cook products. in future this 40% will grow to 100%, 100%. but masala market also it will grow but it will, the growth will not be very rapid but here particularly food industry market the growth will be very rapid so what i am predicting i made it in my mind that it should be easy to cook and the market is very huge because everybody has to eat for that only they are yanning and that uh, that is why i selected masala and followed by food products and uh, this is a billion dollar business so far it was not concentrated much by any multinational or any uh, players fmcg players towards this the company has invested in r&d primarily to churn out new food products to reduce the cost for end consumers as of archie group concern we have been focusing in r&d areas uh, in the last 5 years the uh, company has been invested somewhere around 12 crores uh, in a year we established the state of our art uh, r&d and uh, quality facility we strongly believe that uh, whenever a customer buys a product for the first time is maybe uh, maybe due to the advertisements or the maybe be due to the promotions but whenever the customer comes and buy for the second time is mainly due to the quality and the the quality they have in the product. Besides scoring over quality, the management has also put in a robust logistics process to ensure production as well as distribution are seamlessly integrated. Its 11 factories spread over Chennai need some 600 ingredients to churn out 160 products and that's a big challenge. The challenge is not the 160 products or the 600 uh, raw materials. Uh, to be competitive in the market, we need to have all these SKUs. to cater all the segments on in the market the challenge would be sourcing of the raw materials since it's an agricultural produce it's more seasonal and we have to purchase during the season and have to have an inventory of 3 to 6 months in the cold storages and uh, and archi has uh, very clearly uh, uh, educated the, our suppliers and the farmers uh, to understand our quality and the needs we are known in the market for acha quality buyer Besides ready to cook food, the company has set up Archi Kitchen, which is a desi version of McDonald's. It has started with one outlet and will add another 5 this year. In this business, the management is targeting a turnover of 75 to 100 crore rupees over the next 5 years. With its intense focus on masalas, food products which are backed by strong R&D, the management has set its sights even higher. As an organization, we would uh... want to uh, be a large organization in the next 2 uh, uh, to 3 years we would want to touch a turnover of about 2000 uh, crores and uh, we want to be known as the best and fastest uh, uh, growing fast moving uh, goods uh, food uh, product organization that's the objective that uh, we have laid out for ourselves now uh, that's the near term objective and uh, as an organization uh, we want to uh, achieve maximum customer satisfaction we want to give make cust- the life of customers uh, easy because uh, they would uh, want to use instant uh, food mixes and our masalas and uh, you know uh, make uh, uh, healthy and uh, tasty products at home with these 
that's the objective and that market is uh, very huge currently all in all the mood at archi headquarters seems upbeat and looking at the passion and optimism of its promoter ad padam singh isaac this desi fmcg player will soon become a successful case study at b schools Well, the masala formula of the promoter has worked like magic. But what comes out loud and clear is that A.D. Padam Singh Isaac has stuck to his core business. From masalas, he has moved into ready-to-cook food and now has set up Archie Kitchen, which is a quick service restaurant. So this narrow focus is what makes Archie different. This company sure is a marathon player. On that note, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you next week with another interesting episode. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideal. Innovate. Enable.